election home stretch. The countdown is on with just over a day till the ballots are counted. We have everything you know to make your vote count. Today could be the day you become a billionaire. A Powerball drawing tonight with a record high jackpot. Some stats that could help you strategize. And saying goodbye to an avalanche legend. Coloradans remember the life and legacy of Peter McNabb, a team analyst for over two decades. Thank you for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11 today. I'm Nicole Brady. After tomorrow, it'll all be behind us. The campaign ads, the flyers, the calls and texts as election season comes to an end. Denver 7's Brandon Richard joins us live in Denver with some last minute tips here if you've waited. Brandon. Well, Nicole, it's too late to mail in your ballot. Simply, if you tried mailing it now, it just would not arrive in time to be counted. But there are several options to return your ballot. For instance, you can come here to this drive through at the Denver Elections Division. Uh, you can see they have a couple of workers there. This is a convenient way for you to return your ballot. All you have to do is just drive up. An election worker will collect your ballot. You don't even have to get out of your car. How about that? Now, you can also return your ballot to a 24-hour drop-off box and early in-person voting. That's also available. And, of course, in-person voting is an option for tomorrow as well, Election Day. Just be sure to give yourself plenty of time to fill that ballot out. In addition to some federal seats like U.S. Senate and House, statewide offices are up for grabs, including governor, attorney general, and secretary of state. There are also several state ballot measures. And your local community, can't forget about them. They may have some important races to decide as well. That's why election officials encourage everyone to get out and vote. This thing where, you, yes, everyone turns out, you know, 86% for presidential election, but then they don't vote in the elections that dictate city policy and who is in charge of the agencies that get your potholes filled or who's in charge of the board that creates the policy to educate your children. We get a big drop off there. And again, if you want to drop off your ballot without getting out of your car, you can stop by the drive through here at the Denver Elections Division. These workers tell me they're going to be out here all day today and all day tomorrow. Also, don't forget, RTD and the Secretary of State's office hosting a zero fares day tomorrow. Essentially, that means that you're going to be able to ride any bus or train for free tomorrow, and you don't have to be a voter. That is for everyone to take advantage of. We're live in Denver. Brandon Richard, Denver 7. Thank you, Brandon. More than 80 Colorado companies are making it easier for employees to vote. Our partners at the Denver Post report they're part of the Time to Vote movement, which is a nonpartisan effort aimed at increasing voter turnout across the country. More than 2,000 companies nationwide are involved in this, including Patagonia, the North Face, and Rocky Mountain Anglers, just to name a few of the local ones. Time to Vote encourages employers to offer paid time off or flexible work options for employees so that they can get out to the polls and cast their ballots. If you need help finding a location to vote in person, you can search for that on the Secretary of State's website. Democrats and Republicans are neck and neck in some of the races in critical states. ABC's M. Wynn in Washington has the latest. Election day is tomorrow, and with an evenly split U.S. Senate, any one of the 35 seats up for grabs could tip the balance of power in Congress. In Pennsylvania this weekend, a rare sight, three presidents past and present holding dueling campaign rallies. President Biden and former President Obama stumping for Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Democracy itself is on the ballot. And former President Trump for celebrity television doctor Mehmet Oz. Polls showing the two Senate candidates essentially tied. This Tuesday, you must vote Republican. In Georgia, another dead heat between incumbent Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and his Republican challenger, former NFL star Herschel Walker. We're in a spiritual battle right now, are we not? Yeah. We're in a spiritual battle. And I will always tell you the truth because I'm in the truth-telling business. The Senate races in Arizona and Nevada are also toss-ups. A new ABC News Washington Post poll finds the majority of Americans prefer Republicans to handle the economy, inflation, and crime. They've for abortion and climate change, most Americans want Democrats in charge. But the problem for Democrats going into the final day of voting, George, those issues just aren't as top of mind for most voters. 
House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who's poised to become Speaker if Republicans take back the House on CNN. The beginning, on the very first day, I would hope Democrats would join with us to repeal 87,000 new IRS agents. While more than 40 million Americans have already voted, surpassing early votes in 2018, the majority of Americans will cast their ballots Tuesday, and it will be the voters who determine which candidates will win. Due to expanded mail-in ballots this year, election experts say it could take days for some states to count all their votes. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And as you're filling out your ballot, you can turn to our election guide as a go-to resource on every issue, every candidate. Uh, we've broken down the top races, and we have perspectives on the different questions on the Colorado ballot. You can find that right now on Denver7.com. If you thought this weekend's Powerball jackpot was big, uh, the Powerball prize tonight is a record for the world. Close to $2 billion. All it takes is $2 and a dream to get in. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta has what to know if you're feeling lucky. I'm Denver 7's Veronica Acosta telling you if you haven't bought a Powerball ticket, now is your chance because no one won over the weekend. There was actually one winner at this location. This is a player's cafe right across the street from Sloan's Lake, and they took home a million dollar ticket. But of course, we're talking about this today because there's another drawing tonight. This time it is for an even higher check here. We're talking $1.9 billion. It is the highest ever. That's because there have been 39 consecutive drawings where not a single person has won. And if you're thinking that you might want to go ahead and buy a ticket for yourself, that's an option, but you can also go in on an office pool and the state of Colorado has some advice for you if you do decide to do that. One of those pieces of advice being to find a leader for your group. You also want to write down who all chipped in, how much everyone chipped in, make sure everyone gets a copy of that letter. And then finally, if your pool wins, let the leader of the group claim the prize and distribute it. The Colorado Lottery website, they actually make this really neat form where you can kind of fill everything out, who participated, how much everyone put in, that kind of thing. And just remember, if you go in on the Powerball alone, there are two different ways that you can claim the money. The first is in a lump sum, so you'd get about $929.1 million. And then the second is you can ask for the $1.9 billion, and then you'll get paid out in 30 payments over 29 years. Experts say if you do win, good luck. That is the way to go, though, the latter option, because they say that way you're more responsible with your money. You don't make dumb decisions either. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Nah. No, I want it all right away. <laughs> uh, you might be wondering, are there any luckier stores here in Colorado? Well, Denver 7 has checked the state lottery website and it has a database of all the winning stores. Uh, so since the Powerball game came to Colorado, Winner's Corner in Pueblo has had the most winning Powerball tickets sold, 10 of them. Uh, they only amounted to $355,000, though, so it was those smaller prizes uh, that were won in that. Uh, a King Supers on U South University in Highlands Ranch has sold six Powerball tickets that have uh, racked up $1.1 million in winnings. And the King Supers on North Federal Boulevard in Westminster has sold five winning tickets, paying out a little more than a million dollars. Three people have actually hit the Powerball jackpot here in Colorado in history. Almost half of an estimated 200 Twitter employees in Boulder have been fired. City leaders say a massive layoff like this right before the holidays is forcing those former employees to make some tough decisions. Boulder is hoping tech workers will stay and get another job in the tech sector. Their last day with Twitter was Friday, but they'll continue to be paid and have benefits through January 4th. We spoke to Jonathan Singer with the Boulder Chamber of Commerce about the robust tech industry in the city. We are probably some of the best equipped in the nation to handle when there are these market disruptions. IT and, and data are the lifeblood of the city of Boulder. The chamber collaborates with the County Workforce Center to help displaced employees find new jobs. A Denver 7 consumer alert now. If you get a call from XL saying you need to pay or they're going to cut your power, it's a scam. A lot of times these calls happen, you know, 30 minutes before closing or on a Friday right before the weekend. So your mind starts racing and panicking that you need to fix this and you go to pay that that energy bill over the phone. But unfortunately, it's all a scam.
Yeah, even if caller ID says it's Excel, it's not. Excel told us they never call you about a late bill. If you're worried, you can call the number on your actual bill or go online and check your account. Also, never pay any bill with a gift card, a wire transfer, cryptocurrency, or cash app. Hockey fans in Colorado are mourning beloved Avalanche commentator Peter McNabb this morning. He was the color analyst for the Avs since the team first came to Denver. McNabb was diagnosed with cancer last year but continued working games while undergoing treatment. And he worked through the whole season leading up to the Avs Stanley Cup victory. So a, an emotional moment for him. McNabb graduated from DU before playing professional hockey for 14 years. He was inducted into the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame class of 2021. Altitude tweeted condolences saying the Altitude and Cronky sports families are saddened to announce the passing of our friend Peter McNabb. Our hearts go out to his friends and family and the McNabb family asks for privacy during this difficult time. McNabb was 70 years old. A rare sight coming to the night sky above Colorado. You may want to stay up late or wake up really early to catch something that won't be around again for another few years.